Namaste. So I'm going to talk to you today about the Vata constitution or the predominantly Vata constitution. Um, and it's maybe a little bit easier because you're looking at it. <laughs> so my constitution is Vata Pitta and very low Kapha. So I'll talk about that a little bit as we go through. Um, so Vata is air and ether, the air ether type. And um, interestingly, you'll find that energetically and physically, there is a, a kind of a spiral that takes place because vata being air and ether, where it manifests or its largest site within the body is in the colon. It builds up as wind and gas in the colon. Um, whereas energetically speaking, you'll find vata is everything from the air element at the level of the heart chakra, ether to the throat and consciousness, the mind, intuition. So everything that's in the upper chakras, but physically the site of accumulation is in the lower area. So let's look at that air and ether. How do we understand it? What is that like? Well, let's just start with a, uh, an example. If you're sitting on a, on a windy day or you're sitting in front of a fan, what do you feel? So immediately you'll feel, even on a, on a warm day, what does the wind do? It creates cool. So air and ether are cool. They're also highly mobile, yes? When there's a lot of wind uh, or like uh, you're under a fan, for example, the next thing you'll notice is that your skin becomes dry. So air is also drying. It's also in terms of mass, it's very light. And uh, when it creates that dryness, also what's created is rough, the sense of roughness. So these are some of the characteristics of the propensity in vata. We'll see dryness, dryness on the skin, dryness of the stools, just the general feeling of, of that sort of dry or roughness. Um, it's also a, a type of person that tends to feel cool. Even in summer, if you'll see a, a vata person wearing a sweater, even in summer, you'll understand that there's that cool. But cool and dry, as opposed to kapha, the earth type, which is cool and, and moist. All right, and you'll see this come up also in um, the physical aspect. So vata people, to be cool all the time like that, they're generally um, long and lanky. Uh, they may have long necks. They may be quite slender in build. Um, and so the, again, I was talking about the mass, the mass of air and ether is very light. So we'll find people with very light um, bodies. Um, also with that, uh, a sort of an angularness. So you may find the Vata person, the eyes are a slightly different size, one side to the other, or the profile is slightly different on one side of the face than the other. So that's a little bit about the Vata type. Now, what, how does this show up as a dosha, as a factor of disease? So when we think about vata, about air and ether, they tend to be really macro thinkers. They tend to be very creative and very inspired. And what they'll do is they'll often um, think a lot about their, about their ideas, their abstract ideas, and also talk quite a lot about them. So they'll use up a lot of energy through their enthusiasm, through speech or through thinking, and then feel like they're just go, 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 plan, 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 and then have a little bit of a sort of a nervous collapse. So they're the weakest dosha in terms of stamina or carrying through power. So we often say, you know what you need in business is you need the tangential thinker, the idea person, and then you'll need a pitta, a fire type to actually sort of execute and get it really organized. 
Um, so doshas can actually work really, really well together. But what I'm trying to say for the Vata person is that they're constantly firing the nervous system. They also tend to like the winds of change. So they feel that they always want change in their lives, but then uh, it's very difficult. Change creates a lot of things that one has to manage or do to then stabilize that change. So then the change is tiring. For example, they may like to travel and you'll find a lot of Vata people would be attracted, for example, to jobs like being a flight attendant. But in fact, being far from the earth, up in the ethers, and in a very dry atmosphere like a plane, a plane with constant change of time zones, this is exactly the type of thing that's not stabilizing, that's not grounding for the Vata person and for their nervous system. So we'll see that crop up in the nervous system. Also, with the Vata, um, we find this accumulation of wind or indigestion. So they have to be very careful with their diets to make sure that they're eating foods that are easy to digest for their nervous system. They may need to eat things which create a bit more of a digestive fire so that they can break things down and digest well and therefore preserve energy that they need to create that continence. Um, uh, also uh, with the vata we find um, that there's too much busyness so they need somehow to rein that in and to understand their stamina and to understand their capacity a little bit better. Um, so that's a little bit just in general about the constitution. So what to do? I mean, this is only really helpful if you can understand, all right, what can I do for this? The first, maybe most basic thing I would say about Vata, because it's very mobile, it's dry, it's light, is that you need to create that sense of unctuousness. The unctuousness or smoothness, oiliness, the density that we find in kapha, the earth, earth types. So we're gonna apply some earthy or watery aspects. So things that are kapha in nature, like oils, for example, and we're gonna apply those to the vata person. So something like sesame oil, for example, Pure cold pressed sesame oil is excellent for the vata person even all year round, but most importantly in winter, because sesame oil is our most heavy oily oil. Like when you put it on, it's really quite slick. Um, it has a beautiful aroma as well, which is very pacifying to the vata. And in particular, will oil the feet so that the feet can be grounded will oil the navel because through the navel, the oils will go directly into the body. And just uh, after bath, for example, you'll apply the oil and then wait a short time. And if your body is truly dry, it'll be absorbed into the tissues very, very quickly. You could do your asana practice then. And after you're done, you will probably find that you're okay to put on the clothes or you could just blot whatever remains afterwards. So oiling is very, very important to the Vata person, especially if you're a yogini. So why do I say that? If you're a yogi or a yogini, you're likely gonna be doing pranayama techniques, techniques to import prana into the system. But we have to be careful with that because Vata people, as I'd mentioned, are air and ether. So in fact, their vital essence, their propensity is for prana. They often tend to be very inspired, very motivated, very prana rich. Their difficulty isn't importing the prana, unlike a kapha person. Their difficulty is containing and stabilizing the prana and having it running uh, sort of deeply and smoothly within the system. Vata is prana that is erratic. 
it's near the surface and it's unstabilized yes so if you're doing any pranayama techniques at all dynamic pranayamas you will definitely need to be having ghee in your diet or uh, the, using the sesame oil on your body or having very sort of rich unctuous foods like milk proper fresh milk yes um, if you can digest that well or homemade almond milk because it's got it's very rich in iron and it's very uh, nurturing and it has the oils in it ghee purified butter as i mentioned before unctuous foods like a uh, steamed sweet potato or baked sweet potato with butter on it foods like this that have that sort of heavy density with their natural oils avocado um, so i hope this gives you a bit of an idea of the types of foods that would be very good for vata so these are foods which are, have good natural healthy oils so they're kapha in nature foods to watch for are foods that are vata in nature so which foods are light have a lot of air inside them um, are um, uh, astringent maybe in flavor or bitter in flavor those uh, that sort of dissipate on the tongue so you'll find your dark green uh, lettuces like uh, spinach and kale and uh, mm, collard greens coriander things like this these herbs are already vata in nature they're already very sort of clarifying in nature so if you're going to eat those a vata person should have them steamed and with some healthy oils on top and eating those clarifying foods more moderately um, uh, also uh, foods that create wind would also be include, included in that so things like brussels sprouts and broccoli again those sort of astringent um, bitter clarifying foods so those are fine in the diet but in moderation because uh, they are already sort of light and airy and dry and drying so i'm, I'm just giving you a, a little bit of, of information on what to look for sort of in the foods here but if you go to an ayurvedic cooking guide you can find full lists of foods and what you'll see is you'll find foods which are vata pacifying and so that's what you're looking for not the vata foods will be good let's say for a kapha person but the vata pacifying foods will be those foods which are a little bit denser heavier um, oilier and giving you that grounding nurturing easy to digest um, so those are the things to look for also you have to notice what's easy to digest for you so something like a quinoa would be a nice protein rich grounding grain if cooked with a little bit of extra water for example because it can be a little bit dry cooked with a little bit of extra uh, water and then served with with an olive oil dressing or a um, or with a bit of butter would be really grounding and nurturing for a vata person for example you can look to spicing to help you change the nature of certain foods so in your milk for example if you find it hard to digest the milk then you may want to add something warming or something grounding for your vata so you could add ghee to your milk you, your warm milk you could add cinnamon to give an even more enhanced warming aspect to uh, to the the milk to create a, a vata pacifying milk, um, yeah. So that gives you a little bit of idea about about the herbs. Um, something that's that's warming, that's grounding. You can use things like um, ashwagandha, which is an Indian herb which helps to release uh, gas so the ashwagandha can be also very good for vata and that's often used in curries other things often found in curries are digestive aids like cumin so some some roasted and fresh ground cumin 
can be excellent as a slightly warming herb, but also as a digestive aid. Finally, I'd like to say a few words about asana, pranayama, and meditation practice for the vata practitioner. So what is vata pacifying? Anything that is slow, more still, and grounding as a posture. So balancing postures, holding your focus, holding your balance, often those require that we gather our energy towards the root and we adduct. So balancing tree, for example, would be fantastic for a vata practitioner. Anything that's gonna help release uh, the gas, so wind relieving postures, laying on the back, spinal twisting, which is of course excellent for the nervous system, up the whole spine, and also comp compresses the ascending and descending colon as you twist. Warrior poses and triangular poses are also excellent for gathering stable energy at the root. Forward bending poses, held seated forward bends, for example, can be very uh, grounding and also forward bends are calming for the nervous system. They invoke the parasympathetic nervous system. Laying abdominal breathing is excellent for a person who feels burned out. So at the end of the day, a yoga nidra or a shavasana where you just lie and focus on the abdominal breathing, the full abdominal breath. Again, it's going to immediately trigger the parasympathetic nervous system and is very, very restorative for vata. And lastly, about meditation. So devotional practices and devotional meditations are said to build and preserve ojas, that continence containing energy. And so uh, vata people would do really, really well to cultivate some type of devotional practice and that can take any kind of form, even like a devotion towards plants and animals um, or a devotion on a specific person that one sees as, as wise and grounding. Uh, so that would be really, really helpful. Chanting is, devotional chanting is also really helpful for the vata and not meditations on space. You may have a great aptitude for just these very etheric types of meditations, but if you're wanting to ground or there's too much sort of space in the life to really gather the energy in and to do meditations on the heart chakra yantra, for example, and to keep the hands at the heart or grounded down on the knees or at the root chakra. So grounding and containing that energy system would be perfect for Vata. I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of, of how and why we do advise certain things, certain types of yoga practices um, for people and at certain types, times of their lives as well. Times of change where we need grounding or as we age and are going through major transitional shifts in our lives, this can create vata as well. And so understanding vata pacifying routines can be ideal and beneficial for everyone. Hmm. So we'll leave it there and we'll join you in the videos about pitta and kapha. Hari Om.